COVID-19 has forced all of us to examine our global world and the central importance of health for our social, educational and economic security. The pandemic starkly highlights that threats to health are not experienced equally by all. Since the first cases were recorded in China toward the end of 2019, COVID-19 rapidly spread across the globe, causing death, suffering and disrupting many of the fundamental certainties at the core of people's lives. Its impact extends beyond the health sector, leaving communities to deal with the human, economic and social crises that have resulted. These effects are not distributed equally among or between populations. Health consequences of COVID-19 have been more pronounced in underserved and vulnerable groups, and the economic and social impacts have disproportionately affected the poor, displaced and marginalised. There are also serious concerns that the pandemic will further entrench disadvantage for these populations, perhaps for generations. Principles of equity and equality have long been held in public health, and we see them ingrained in Sustainable Development Goal 3, which seeks to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. My name is Dr. Kristen Beek. And I'm Dr. Sophia Lin. Health is embedded throughout the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And the one SDG that is specifically devoted to health is broad and uses terms that are inclusive and relevant to all populations. The health SDG is associated with 13 targets, such as reducing maternal mortality, ending all preventable deaths of newborns and children under five years of age, ending the epidemics of HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and other communicable diseases, reducing mortality from non-communicable diseases, halving global deaths and injuries from road traffic accidents, and ensuring universal access to sexual and reproductive healthcare services. Since these targets were set in 2015, we, as a global community, have seen progress. If we look at maternal mortality alone, the number of maternal deaths per 100,000 live births dropped by around 38% worldwide, and yet we know that still, every day, approximately 810 women die from preventable causes related to pregnancy and childbirth and that there are vast differences in the numbers of women dying, both between regions and within countries. 94% of maternal deaths occur in low and lower middle income countries. And overall, the risk of a woman dying from a maternal related cause during her lifetime in a low income country is around 120 times higher than for a woman living in a high income country. And still in high income countries like Australia, we see critical disparities in maternal health outcomes for Indigenous women and women from different socioeconomic and ethnic backgrounds. Across all settings, these deaths are largely preventable, yet they continue to occur. Why? In contrast to the improvements in maternal mortality, there are other SDG3 targets where not only is there no improvement, the situation is getting worse. For example, the number of people dying from or whose quality of life is reduced by chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer and mental ill health is rapidly increasing. Globally, over 70% of all deaths today are due to chronic diseases. In Australia, it is nearly 90%. With ageing and rapidly urbanising populations and increasing threats to food and water security due to climate change, chronic diseases will continue to be the major cause of death and disability. But again, the impact of these conditions is not experienced equally across populations. Why is this so? The answers to each of these questions reveal a common truth. Underlying the priority global health issues highlighted by SDG3 are fundamental concerns of equality and equity. High rates of maternal death are rooted in poverty, unequal access to healthcare and harmful gender norms, roles and relations which determine a woman's status in society and undermine her power to make decisions for her own and others' health. Chronic diseases are much more prevalent in people who experience poverty, have lower education levels, disabilities, or who are otherwise marginalised. The vast majority of chronic disease is highly preventable through achieving food security, healthy and safe spaces to live, work and play, accessing essential medication, limiting access to unhealthy products, and discouraging unhealthy behaviours. Globally, COVID-19 too has magnified existing inequalities, compromised the progress we have made toward the Sustainable Development Goals, and undermined access to healthcare for many. The pandemic has highlighted again that the experience of health is different for different groups. So what then can be done? To promote well-being for all at all ages, we must understand what determines a person or community's experience of health 
and provide the supports and resources necessary to overcome those factors that undermine health and enhance those that are health promoting. This applies applying an equity lens to all that we do. Ensuring equity means that all people are provided with the supports they need, dependent on their particular circumstances. We need to support all people to obtain good health, not just those who can afford it. This is not simply about ensuring everyone receives the same quantity of resources. Distributing the same amount of resources is known as equality. However, some people are much further away from reaching the goal of good health. Distributing the pool of resources in a way that ensures everyone achieves the goal is known as equity. This means that the most disadvantaged receive the most support and the most advantaged receive the least. Equity then is key to any efforts we may take to achieve healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Every one of us can play a role. We can do this by applying an equity lens to all that we do. You can do your bit to promote equity in health. Support organisations that care for marginalised people through financial donations or by volunteering your time. Lobby your local elected representative to act on legislation that reduces inequity. Speak out against toxic messaging that perpetuates discrimination and inequities. Call out unsafe, unjust or unfair practices or behaviours you witness that could threaten the physical safety or mental health of people around you. Take action to reduce your contribution to air, land and water pollution so that the physical environment for everyone is safe and healthy. Ultimately, to achieve the goal of SDG 3, each and every one of us needs to do our part to lower inequity and ensure that everyone has the support and resources they need to achieve good health. Small changes we all make individually may not feel like much, but collectively can make an enormous difference.